Hey everybody, welcome back to Pizza Legends. In this video, we're gonna set up a story flag system for tracking progress. So say you talk to a character now and they say one thing, but then you achieve something in the game, like winning a battle or witnessing a cutscene, and then you come back to that character and they should say something else. That's the system we're gonna to create today. The starting code is linked below. As always, be sure to like and sub to follow along with the whole series. Let's get started. So here I am in the game, and when I talk to this NPC down here, she says one thing and then she busts into battle. What we want to achieve today is that I want her to actually say something else if I've completed an action in the game. And that action is just going to be uh, talking to this guy up here. If I've talked to him, then this character should say something else. This is kind of the final piece in how the game can really feel alive, where the characters react to different things that you've done. So in the code here, I'm going to open up player state JS, and here we've got our pizzas and our lineup and that kind of thing. I'll collapse this for now. I'm going to make a new object in here called story flags. This is going to be an object. It's going to hold keys that look like this. Um, did something true. So an, a real example of that would be like uh, defeated first boss. So now when you're talking to characters, they may say something else if you have defeated the first boss. And uh, of course, when you start the game, you haven't done anything yet. So this object will start empty like this. But as you do things, we'll keep adding flags to this object. The NPCs and objects in our game will start to consider this when they return what they should say or do. So let's go to our overworld map and find our NPC character. She says, I'm busy. Here she is. Currently, there's only one object in the talking array here, and I like to call these objects scenarios, meaning the list of talking possibilities here could have multiple scenarios in it, and then we're going to check those story flags before deciding which events array to use. So I'll add another one here. It's going to have events on it, and we can bring over one of these text messages. She'll say something like, um, isn't Aria the coolest? But here's the thing, we only want to use this scenario if we have all of the required story flags. So I'm going to make a new list in here called required. And let's see, this one's going to be called talked to Aereo. So we should only get these events if we have this story flag. It's an array, so if you wanted to have multiple story flags, like you need to have completed thing A, B, and C before you get this, you're set up to do that. So let's find the bit of code where we decide on talking events to use. That's an overworld map. Here in the check for action cutscene, we kind of check to see if there's a thing at the right location, and then we just blindly use the first one here, the first scenario. So let's add some more logic to make sure that we find the most relevant scenario to use. So here we'll say relevant scenario. We want to uh, take our talking list and find the most accurate one. So we'll iterate through the scenarios. What we're looking for is to make sure that we have all of the strings in that array. So it would be like scenario dot requires every. So this every is a different array method, uh, similar to like map or filter. It's kind of cool. It basically iterates through everything and each item must pass a test. And if all the items in the list pass the test, then this thing will return true. You don't see it around too often, but I think it's kind of neat. So we're iterating through a list of story flags or story points. I'll say SF there. And we want to return player state story flags, checking the presence for this particular string. Now it's possible that a scenario doesn't have a required list on it. And so here we can say or just an empty array to kind of keep it backwards compatible. So now if we have a relevant scenario, instead of just using this talking zero list, we can say if we have a relevant scenario, start cutscene, but use the relevant scenario dot events. And this should be required, not requires. Let's see what happens when we run the game now. So I'll navigate down here. I'll talk to this person. She continues to say the other thing in the list right here, the second scenario, because we don't have the story flags required by the first one. But what would happen if we boot the game with this flag? So go to player state in our object here. Let's just start it as true. Now I'm running the game. When I talk to her, 
she uses the other scenario instead. Isn't Aria the coolest? This, by the way, is a really handy trick uh, for booting the game up in many different scenarios. So if you're testing something that happens at the very end of the game or late in the game, you don't have to play through the whole game to test it. Of course, you can just kind of boot it up as if you've already accomplished these things. So rather than starting the game with this accomplishment, let's go ahead and add an overworld event so that we can add these to the story flag state on the fly. So I'll remove all of these, in fact, Let's go to overworld event and we'll collapse pause here. I'm going to make a new one called add story flag. It's going to get its resolve and we're simply going to take player state. So window dot player state, the story flags, and we're going to take whatever story flag comes in from the event and set it to true. And then this is just synchronous. So right after that, we can go ahead and resolve it. That'll continue the overworld loop. Let's add one of these now. So we'll come to overworld. When we talk to Ario, he's this kooky guy that, that says, bah, um, let's get rid of some of these events. Instead of starting a battle, let's have him add a story flag. And the flag is going to be the same one that our NPC is looking for, talk to Ario. Let's modify our behavior of the NPC for a second too. Maybe she should say something like, instead of I'm busy. Have you met Ario? So if we talk to her the first time, we should get this back because we don't have this story flag yet. But then if we go talk to Ario, this event will run that adds the story flag to our player state. Then if we come back and talk to her again, this scenario will match because we have the flag, and then we should get this dialogue instead. So let's try this out. Come down here, talk to her the first time. Have you met Ario? No. Uh, let me come up here and meet Ario. Again, kooky guy says, bah ha ha. Now under the hood, that other event, it doesn't really do anything, but that other event has happened. And so I should have another flag in player state. Come down here, talk to her again. And she says something else. So this system is how you can string together things that the player does and have the characters react to them. We can also combine this system with battles. So say we finish a battle, we want to add a story flag after that battle to say like, hey, I defeated this battle. That way characters can react to that kind of thing. But if we lose the battle, we want to make sure that we cancel out of the cutscene so that we don't actually get credit for winning the battle. So let's go ahead and add that kind of thing now. Back in the code here, let's configure this NPC um, to start that battle again. Talk some trash. And now after this battle is over, this cutscene is just going to continue. And so we can simply take an event, like add story flag, like we just set before, and use it here too. So this could be like defeated Beth. So as soon as this battle is over, the cutscene system will move on to this event and just set it under the hood. So then any cutscene that requires this will be already set up and ready to go. So that part is already working. But again, if we lose the battle, we want to make sure that nothing else happens after this. That way we won't accidentally get credit for defeating Beth when we in fact lost to Beth. So let's, uh, let's take a look at Battle.js. In here, we're configuring the turn cycle with an on winner callback. What we can do is take this kind of check and pass it through the on complete event. So basically on complete, we're going to fire a new Boolean called did win. If the player won, it'll be true. If they lost, it'll be false. So here we can just check on complete. If winner is player, then the value will be true. If we look at our overworld event and the battle one, spindle that open, we'll get that Boolean back here. So did win. And now we can resolve this overworld event, but pass through a value, which is something that we're not yet doing in the overworld. So if did win is true, we want to pass a string like uh, one battle. Otherwise, uh, we'll say lose battle, I guess lost battle, keep it consistent. So let's grab this lost battle case and head over to overworld map. We'll find our cutscene loop. Here we can actually grab the value of the overworld event as it resolves. And so if the result is lost battle, then we can simply break out of this for loop. 
we won't move on to the next event. It'll just break out of the loop. The ending and all of this stuff will resume as normal. And now to test this kind of thing, let's find Beth again. If you make it this far into the cutscene, she'll say, you crushed me like floppy, crushed me like weak pepper. Definitely triple A copywriting here. So basically, if we win this battle, then we should go ahead and receive this event, and then she'll say this thing. But if we lose the battle, it'll just stop right here. Let's go ahead and test both cases. For winning the battle, I'll come down here. She'll talk some trash. I'm going to crush you. She's already starting with low health, so it should be easy to just finish this battle by using Womp. And there you go. She, you crushed me like weak pepper. Now for losing the battle, we're going to start with a little trick where we're going to take our pizza lineup and reduce it down to just one pizza. And then we're going to start that pizza with almost no HP. So how about one? When I launch the game now, you see everything is updated here. I'll start the battle in very poor condition. Uh, I'll just use some other move here like olive oil. And now she defeated me on her first move. I'm back in the overworld, but none of the other events happened. So from a UX perspective, I can just retry the battle. You could also extend the system to fire off other events when you lose the battle. I'll leave that up to you in extra credit. If I talk to her again, we're back in this loop. So at this point, we can combine cutscenes and story flags to really make the game feel alive and aware. I hope you take this, run with it, extend it, make it your own, and tell some awesome stories in your game. As always, thank you so much for watching this episode to the end. Be sure to subscribe to see the whole thing. Join us in Discord to tell us about the game that you're working on or planning to work on. There's a link below where you can support this channel directly. Thank you so much for that. We have a few episodes left to go, but we're getting close to the end. It's been an awesome journey. See ya in the next video.